You know, I love the way your eye goes like that. Your eyebrow goes. You know when you said you were glad that I was in this with you? Well, I'm glad that you're glad that I'm with this. Let me tell you something. What? What? Not only am I glad, but there have been times, Thomas, when I was downright impressed. What? Hmm? I'm a nervous wreck half the time. But you're so strong. You're as solid as a rock. Why do you do that? Why don't you break? You mean, am I ever afraid? Yeah, once or twice here. The castle. Mm -hmm. Vietnam. Why don't you tell me about Vietnam? It changes you. I'll tell you about it sometime when we're old and gray and rocking on our rocking chairs on our front porch. <laughs> old and gray. Rocking on a rocking chair on the front porch. I think that's pretty presumptuous. Presumptuous hell, I'm in love with you. You know, it's great to say things like that to you, like a clobber. You can be so dear, Don. Lie down. Get some sleep. I'm sorry. I just wish I knew what that screech was. I just don't want to be attacked by a All hyena right. okay. when I'm sleeping. I'll build you a split level house. What? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to build my own house. I'm going to build a house for us. I'm going to build it with my own two hands. How about it? Two hands? How are you at pouring concrete? I, I didn't oh. say I wouldn't have any help. <laughs> I do it, but all by myself. No, I mean it. If you build a house all on your own with your own two hands, you feel great. Everybody comes to see it. Come on, would, you don't believe I could do it, do you? Oh, I know. You could do it. Well, then how about it? Come on, how? Would you? Let me build your house. Could I have my own spa? Like a well, whirlpool? You could, have, you could have everything. I would make it a passion. Mm. Give you everything you could have. For the rest of my life. Change, because you say change. Hmm. Does that drive you crazy? <laughs> it does sometimes, <laughs> uh, but I get over it. Because what's so amazing about you is that you're so, uh, it's, that you're somebody so obstinate and cantankerous to be so damn little. Thanks, I think you're swell too. I even like you when you're obnoxious. Oh, thanks. You do, huh? Yes. That is something you will never hear me say in broad daylight. It's strictly moonlight talk. Oh. Oh. Um. Are you tired? I'm exhausted. Cool. Well, come over to my bed here. It's, uh, Hi. small. Cozy. Cozy, that's right. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh. Do you know what I'm thinking about? Do you know? Paris. Yes. How did you know that? Um, because I was thinking the same thing. You know, that's the last time, the first, the only time. Mm -hmm. Have we ever danced? If I tell you something, it better not go to your head, but I think that you are a terrific dancer. Well, that's because you led. <laughs> I did? Yes. <laughs> but I let you get away with it because you look so beautiful. I like her. Never forget that night. Hmm. 
Do you have any idea how much I wanted you that night? I had an idea. I thought you felt the same way. Did you? I wanted us to be together. I did. I just... I was scared. Afraid. Of me? No. James, everything with James, he had hurt me so much and that was still very real to me. I was afraid of making another mistake. Are you sure your feelings now? I'm sure. No questions. No doubts. No questions, no doubts. What happens now? I've never been this happy in my life. Tom, I just don't want to die till I belong to you. Since night. To the temporary absence of Julie Ridley, the part of Annie Stewart is being played by Mary Lynn. It might be a nice change. Kind of like a little vacation. We'll take some of your toys and... Well, let's see if we can get a room on the top floor because I know how much you like to look down at all the trees and ride the elevator and all that. Is Daddy coming? Well, no, honey, I don't think he will. But we're going to be fine, even without Daddy. You wait right here, okay? Okay. okay. you wouldn't be here. Come on in. Hi, Paul. Connor! Nice to see you. Did you come to give me a guitar lesson? Mm -mm, not this time. I came to talk to your mother. 
Listen, sweetheart, why don't you go upstairs and start getting some of your toys together that you'd like to take with you, okay? Now. Now. Okay. Okay. See you later, Gunner. I'll give you a lesson soon. Okay. I brought something for you. Tell me in the tunnel about your dreams. Well, yes, I remember. And you said that you felt that you'd lived another life in another time and that you'd fallen in love with a man named Joffrey Smythe Everett. Yes, oh, I, I really don't want to talk about it. It's me to talk about it. I saw the name Smythe Everett in the newspaper yesterday. In the newspaper? Yes, he was a painter in England in the 18th century. And his works were being shown in a gallery in Boston. Now, now, you said that this man that you fell in love with, the man who was so much like me, was an artist. Yes. So I went to Boston. And there are three pictures on this place. This is one of them. You. Oh, my God, it's the woman that I was. It's the same dress that she wore, that I wore. Now, you told me once that, that you felt that you were going mad. Yes. Well, maybe there's a very simple explanation. Maybe you, you saw this picture once, maybe in your childhood, and it sort of stuck with you. But you are exactly like this woman. Gunner, this frightens me. All this time, you've been blaming yourself for these feelings. But they weren't mistaken. You see, when I saw this picture, I suddenly began to understand what you'd been going through. Darling, let's be happy together. Father, we found each other. I've never loved anybody else. Gunner, please. I love you with all my heart. I want you to marry me. Oh, the way you feel towards me. No, you know I'm not. It's just... Listen to me, darling. I understand the way you feel. But we're meant to be together. You know we are. The only hope for happiness that either of us has is together. I can't give you an answer now. And you know in your heart that it's true. There's something that I have to take care of first. And until I have, I, I can't even think about you and me. I want you to know how much I care about that little boy. Yes. And Paul loves his father. I know. But sooner or later, no, mat no matter how much you make believe, he's going to be wrong between you and James. Connor, I'm just not thinking very clearly. An awful lot has happened. Finding this painting. <laughs> that means that we were destined to be together. Why did you decide not to go to New York with James? I really don't want to talk about it. At least not until I've seen James and discussed it with him. I'd like to be there when you do. No. No, I don't want you there. This is between James and me. And I don't want you involved. It could get ugly. More than likely it will. So let me be there. No. This is something I have to do by myself. So the spinal tap on Stacy was clear? Yes. 
Yes, we got very lucky there. And they're, they're watching the pressure levels on her brain very closely, but she just is not coming around as quickly as I'd hoped. She seemed to be a little better a while ago when I was with her. <laughs> I even got her to laugh at one of my cordy jokes. She's the best audience I've had in a long time. Because you, you do seem able to put her... Put your books right over here where you can reach them. Okay. Did you bring my dinosaur? Did I bring your dinosaur? What kind of mother do you think I am? Of course I brought your dinosaur. It's on your bed and you didn't even see it. Oh, oh. And I brought one frisbee, one racing car, and one Rubik's Cube. <laughs> Why are we staying here? Well... Um, that's a, that's a little hard to explain. Uh, you see, sometimes grown-ups don't get along with each other. And that's what happened with your daddy and me. So, you and I are not going to be living at home with Daddy. Can you understand that? Oh, we can go home we can. I don't know. But you know what? Next week, you, young man, are going to go back to day camp. And you're going to be able to ride the ponies and go swimming all day and you'll have a great time. And our friend's going to be there. Yeah, I think some of them will still be there. Uh, Dana White, I think, will be there. And if you are real good, I will let you take that dinosaur with you. Okay. Okay. And you're going to have lots of fun and exciting adventures. You won't miss our other place at all. Who is this? Who's on the line? Hungry. Beauty comes 
after my stomach. It's called amargolitis. Amargolitis. That's lovely. It is. No doubt named after a Greek goddess. Yeah. Greek goddess of lips. <laughs> Thank you. You're kind of swell, too. Mm. You think so, dear? No. <laughs> didn't I make that mm. clear? Say it. Nice. Say it. I didn't think I had to. I was using non-verbal communication. Were you? Uh, yes, and were you ever? I just... How old? 23? Where did you work? You're right. Yeah, never mind that. <laughs> Uh, try some verbal communication. Tell me, tell me. Flatter me. I'm a glutton for flattery. I like my sweet margolitis. I like it. But I love you. I love you. I love you. Mm. Goddess of eyes. And lips and limbs. Knees, everything. Man. Yeah, what about this? Yeah. What about this gray matter? Uh -huh. I just don't want to be another sex symbol. Never, you know? I never thought of it as a sex symbol. I never I, thought of it as a sex symbol. No, I would. No. no. <laughs> I, yes, I think if you not just a sex symbol, <laughs> you're fine. I love you. Every time I come in to see you, I see Karen. Mm -hmm. I mean, now part two of As the World Turns. Mick, you down there? Mick, look, you got a minute. I got a talk to you. That's the only place he does go when he starts working on one of these things. Yeah, well, you know, he always was like that once he gets going on something. Uh, he's dedicated. Well, I, I guess he, he should be back soon. Steve, listen, can you open these for me? Sure. They're stuck. Well, why do you think I brought him down here? Well, I thought that uh, maybe you just didn't try hard enough, or I thought maybe you were just trying to be too delicate. There you go. Pickles. Now, you know what these do to you, right? No, no. They put the fur in your tongue. Oh, good. Good, terrific, yeah. Here I am making lunch for Nick. Kim can't get away from the office, and when she does come home, her husband might just have fur on his tongue. That's right. Well, you know what they say, now. I mean, there's somebody for everybody. Yeah, I guess so. Listen, can I make you a sandwich or something? You know, do you want no. fur on your tongue? No. No, I better not. Uh, look, I don't think Nick's going to be in the mood for company. Well, you may have a point. Uh, look, will you tell me, what kind of a mood was he in this morning? I don't know, not terrific. You know, he's changed ever since Kim got that new job. I don't know, why? Why do you ask? I was just wondering. Look, I, uh, I think I'm going to come back another time, okay? See, don't go. Get it out. No, I, uh, what do you mean, gut it out? Gut it out. You and Nick haven't even spoken in weeks. Come on. Yeah, well, I mean, this wasn't exactly a social call, you know. Well, I think it's terrible for two brothers to be enemies the way you two are. You need each other. I don't know, that, that makes me sound old-fashioned, huh? Well, you worried about being old-fashioned? Well, I don't know why you, two, you and Nick don't get along all that well. But families shouldn't be divided. 
And I think if you two both just gave a little, you could patch things up. And I think it would be, it would be better for Kim that way, too. Yeah. Well, so come on, tell me about you. Uh, you still in the dorm? Yeah, uh huh. Summer session. Yeah. How's it going? I mean, are you behaving yourself? I'm behaving myself, yeah. Thanks a lot. What do you mean? Well, I'm not allowed to ask that? No, no. Why? Behaving myself is boring, darling. It's pathetically dull. Hello, Ariel. James, what can I do for you? I'm looking for Barbara. Is she here? Well, she phoned earlier. She said she might be coming in late. She did. Did she say anything about Paul? She mentioned something about getting him settled in a new place. In a new place? That's just marvelous, isn't it? My son living in a hotel. I have you to thank for that, don't I? James, that's not true. After all the years we've known each other, and you betrayed me. I most certainly did not. You betrayed yourself. Well, how did you tell Dixon my personal business? James, John is my fiance. We do not keep secrets from each other. But it's my private life. Dixon had no right to know anything about it. James, are you listening to yourself? You carry on an affair with your cook in the home you share with Barbara. And when she finds out, you thrash around trying to find someone else to blame. Have you thought of blaming yourself? I explain to you... You explain that your shocking behavior was Barbara's fault. Well, I'm sorry, but I just don't see it that way. But why tell Dixon? Do you know something? You don't realize how destructive that man can be. James, I don't have to listen to any more of this. You're talking about the man I'm going to marry. Yes, and I think you two deserve each other. Let me warn you about something. Don't ever bring Dixon around me. And when you marry him, I never want to see you again. Well, all right, James, if that's the way you feel about it. As a matter of fact, perhaps it's for the better, since I've found that you're really not the man I thought you were. You're wasting your time. She's not here. What do you mean? Who's not here? What do you think I mean? Barbara, who else? Would you, uh, leave us alone for a moment, please? James, don't you think... Would you just leave? Thank you. You're not going to get Barbara, you know. She may be momentarily confused, but you're not going to take her away from me. James, you are mistaken. I'm not trying to take her away from you. Oh, you know something? You were really sort of, uh, clever, weren't you? The way you moved into our lives? Coming around, getting me involved in uh, your little hot air balloon race, giving Paul guitar lessons. But what you were really after all along was my wife. And I was a fool not to see it. James, I don't know what to say to you. I don't know how to make you understand. Understand? You get my wife to leave me and you don't understand? What did you say? You heard me. Are you telling me that Barbara left you? That shouldn't be such a big surprise to you, should it? After the way you've been secretly wooing her all along, sending her little love songs, sneaking around behind my back to see every chance you could get. And what about my son? What have you done to him? Putting on this great big show about how much you cared for him, giving him guitar lessons. And now he's torn between two parents and uprooted from his home. Well, let me tell you something. You're not going to get Paul, and you're not going to get Barbara either. James, would you calm down and just explain to me what you happened? Get out of my way, all right? What was it? I think my craftsmanship is lacking. What? What are you going to do? Go in there and see what's the matter. Oh, Tom. Oh. Be careful. Oh. Attractive. Hmm? Yes, they're yeah. wonderful. Don't you hurt them. Uh, you see any crocodiles or other large reptiles, you know? Thank 
crocodiles yet? No, I'm not me. Over. in a few seconds. Capital, next on most of these CBS stations. Accessories by R.J. Graziano. Women's fashions courtesy of Fitzgerald by John McCoy. Join us tomorrow for As the World Turns.